Uh, good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for connecting on this morning's mentoring hour. We have a subject which is of concern to all of us and uh, we'll get into it uh, shortly. But before we talk about the subject and hand it over to the person who will be sharing, let's begin with a word of prayer. And I want to request uh, one of us on the call to please go ahead and lead us in prayer. All right, uh, maybe Natasha. Natasha, is it possible to please lead us in prayer? Yeah, sure, Nancy. Thank you so much. Father God, we just want to come in this hour into your care. Lord, you know our needs. You just fulfill the desires of our heart this morning. Just answer our questions, meet our needs, and be with the uh, Deepika ma'am as she teaches us, Lord, and everyone who has some question on their heart. Just answer them. Lord, we just come and desire into your care. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Natasha. So today's subject is uh, familiar to all of us because in some or the other season of life, I'm sure we've all experienced uh, worry and anxiety to a certain extent. But today, Pastor Deepika is going to shed more light concerning what is um, a godly concern regarding matters as compared to worrying or uh, being anxious about matters. So I'll just hand it over to Pastor Deepika, who's also one of our faculty here at the Bible College. And uh, Pastor Deepika will take us through what she has for us today. Over to you, Pastor Deepika. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I will uh, open up the presentation and then we can get started. Um, yeah, just let me figure out. Is um, is it showing up on uh, everyone's yes. screens? It is, uh, but it's fairly large. So, if possible, to just reduce it a little, it would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. This is awesome. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, today we will uh, talk about the difference between godly concern and ungodly anxiety. Um, if we were to look in Second uh, Kings chapter 13, verse 23, it says over there that the Lord had compassion on the Israelites and showed concern for them. So it is a good and godly thing to have concern. Uh, for our families, for the people that we love, uh, regarding the things that are important to us. It is good to have a godly concern. You know, in the same way, God was concerned for his family of Israelites, uh, for their uh, life, for their future. Uh, so we should be concerned about how we manage our finances, uh, about paying our bills on time, about our health. Uh, these are things that God expects us to be concerned about and to be proactive, in fact, uh, about. Uh, however, uh, we are told to never worry about these things. Uh, so we should be careful and see to it uh, that our godly concern uh, for these things doesn't cross the line and turn into ungodly worry or anxiety. So how can we uh, know whether what we are experiencing in our mind, uh, whether it is godly concern or whether it is ungodly worry? So we will look at a few points uh, which can um, help us to determine whether what we are experiencing is godly concern or whether it is ungodly worry and anxiety. Uh, so the first point to remember uh, is that 
whenever it is legitimate godly concern it it's always god centered um yeah uh, it's it's always god centered uh, in the sense in a crisis situation a believer with godly concern would do whatever he is able to do you know in his capacity from his side uh, and whatever is beyond his capacity whatever is beyond his control he trustingly releases that into god's sovereign hands he chooses not to worry about it uh, in other words he is content to let god resolve the issue uh, in whatever way god sees fit on the other hand worry is very self centered um uh, because uh, worry rises out of a desire to control every event and somehow make it turn out exactly the way we want it to turn out uh, you know because god doesn't give us uh, exact details about uh, how exactly he's going to resolve the problem and what exactly he's going to do when he's going to do it he doesn't give us those details the warrior is not comfortable with this the warrior is not comfortable with leaving things in god's hands he wants to be in control of every aspect of that issue uh, and only that will make him feel safe and so he worries he thinks to himself what if god doesn't you know make things go uh, the way i want it what if things uh, what if the outcome is different what if uh, this happens what if that happens and so uh, uh, he is not comfortable with allowing god to be god and allowing god to decide uh, what is best you know so uh, the warrior is very self centered and this causes him to worry on the other hand a person who trusts god will do whatever he can from his side and leave the rest in god's hands trusting god to decide and make decisions so one question that we can ask ourselves when we are feeling concerned about something is we can ask ourselves um am i just doing my part regarding this you know this problem regarding this issue am i just simply doing my part sincerely and leaving the rest in god's hands or do i keep worrying and wishing that somehow i could control even god's part and somehow make him do things you know the way i want things to go so that indicates uh, i mean if if uh, you know if our attitude is uh, of the second type where we are trying to control all of it and we want to just somehow make god uh, work things our way if that is our attitude it shows that we have crossed over from godly concern into ungodly worry where we want to control events where we want to have our way and uh, that is why we go on reflecting upon that issue in our mind and thinking okay what can i do to somehow force things you know in this direction uh, instead of just trusting the lord and leaving it in his hands a second point that maybe we can uh, keep in mind is that um, godly uh, concern is always action oriented uh because the person has a godly concern and he's looking to god trustingly he asks himself uh what would god have me do in this particular situation you know because uh, we read in ephesians 2:10 we are told that we are created in in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them so which means for every situation of our lives god already has certain works in mind for us which he would like us to do in those particular situations so a person who's trusting will ask the lord and say lord i am deeply concerned about the situation that i am going through that my family is going through what would you have me do with regard to this so they trust god and they take a step of faith and they do whatever god is leading them to do on the other hand uh, worry paralyzes action because uh, instead of looking to god the warrior goes on looking at the problem and the more the person looks at the problem the bigger the problem becomes in their eyes and it they become so filled with anxiety and fear that it literally paralyzes them and they do nothing they just keep worrying uh, so that uh, would be a negative way of approaching it uh, so we see that especially you know in the case of uh, um the david and goliath story uh, where we are told in first samuel chapter 17 uh, we are told that for 40 days 
every morning and every evening, Goliath uh, comes uh, to the Israelite army and he challenges them saying, give me a man to fight with. And uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are told in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, verses 10, 11, it says over there that Saul and the Israelites kept looking at this giant and they were, um, it says over there that they were dismayed and terrified. So you see, their eyes were on the giant. They were, their eyes were on what the giant is saying. And that dismayed and terrified them. On the other hand, David uh, does not look at the giant. He doesn't look at the problem. Rather, he looks at God. And he takes a simple step of faith. Um, uh, he takes his staff in one hand. He takes up the sling in the other hand. He takes uh, five smooth stones. And he steps out to do uh, whatever little he can do. Uh, and in fact, Goliath is amused with his efforts. Uh, you know, um, Goliath says to uh, David in um, Samuel 17, um, verse 43, he, he says, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Because you see what David is uh, doing for, on his part is very, very little. And uh, but then, you know, um, David clarifies and, and he says, I'm coming to you, you know, not with sticks. That's basically what he's trying to indicate. He says, I'm not coming to you with sticks. He says in uh, verse um, 45, he says, I am coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he says in verse 46, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. So David was not under any impression that his staff or his sling is going to, uh, you know, achieve the end result. He was stepping out in faith doing the little bit that he could do, trusting God to do the bigger bigger part you know, of bringing down the giant. So a question that maybe we could ask ourselves, a second question that we can ask ourselves is, you know, when we are, when we are uh, concerned about something, we can ask ourselves, um, am I um, proactively going to God trustingly and saying, Lord, for all of my life situations, you have already planned good works that you would like me to do. So in this situation, what, oh Lord, would you, what small role would you like me to play? So we, we, we ask him and whatever we feel uh, the Lord telling us to do, we do that knowing that that little, uh, little bit that we are doing is not going to resolve the problem, but the God in whom we are trusting, he will take care of the bigger issues. What our, our role is just to do the little part that he is entrusting to us. So, uh, we ask ourselves, uh, am I exercising godly concern and just doing you know, uh, whatever God is leading me to do? Or am I so paralyzed with fear that I'm not able to take any action? So if, the, if, if it is the latter, then that would be ungodly worry rather than godly concern. A third point that maybe we can um, keep in mind is that uh, godly concern shows love and care. But ungodly worry tends to get obsessed um, when we are, you know, um, when we care about someone, when we love someone. Yes, we do feel deep concern regarding them, uh, regarding the situation that they are facing. But we choose not to become obsessed with it. Uh, an example that we can look at is in First Samuel chapter 15, where uh, the Lord says uh, that uh, Saul is now rejected from uh, being king. And this grieves Samuel very deeply. In 1 Samuel 15, verse 11, Samuel, it, it says, it grieved Samuel and he cried out to the Lord all night. The entire night he intercedes on behalf of Saul. This is an example of godly concern where Samuel takes this issue before God and you know pleads on behalf of uh, Saul. Um, but then, Later, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, this is what God says to Samuel. He says, how long will you mourn for Saul? And he says to him, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. So um, we are not sure how many weeks or how many days you know, um, uh, Samuel spends in thinking about uh, Saul and in praying for him and all of that. But a point comes where the Lord says, no. You know, uh, I have rejected him as king, and now it is time for you to move on. So it is good for us to care for our loved ones and be concerned for them and intercede for them in prayer and think about them. But 
we are never meant to be obsessed with you know uh, with them and their issues we are meant to leave things in god's hands and let god be the final you know um, uh, person in authority who decides uh, what should be done and how things should go so a third question that we can ask ourselves is you know uh, this 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 thing that i'm very deeply concerned about this person about whom i'm deeply concerned am i placing them before god in prayer uh, if if i'm doing that that is definitely godly concern but if i'm constantly worrying and obsessing about them and i want things to go in a particular way regarding them then that would be ungodly concern so these are just three uh, you know simple points that we looked at to um, assess whether what we are experiencing in our heart and mind is godly concern or whether it is ungodly anxiety so in case we are experiencing ungodly concern uh, uh, ungodly worry then uh, what can we do regarding that uh, how can we see to it that our concern stays godly and something acceptable in the eyes of god and not you know turn into uh, something that is displeasing to the lord uh, so that we we don't allow this godly concern to turn into anxiety or worry what can we do what preventive measures can we take there's this one uh, christian counselor who suggested this he said imagine two circles a very large circle that would be god's circle and then uh, imagine another small circle and uh, so uh, he says um, whatever is outside of your control you know things that you can't do anything about place them very firmly in god's circle they are meant to be handled by the lord so you commit it to him and you say lord you take care of these things for me because they are outside my you know out of my control and uh, whatever you can do from your side whatever little faith steps that you can take you know with god's permission and with his help you write down those things in the small circle uh, so uh, you do those things to the best of your ability and not uh, and choose not to worry about the things which have been placed in the large circle to use an example uh, let's assume that a mother is very concerned about her teenager uh, who's becoming very very rebellious so she's very concerned now about the future of this uh, girl but can she control the future of the of the of the, of, of her daughter you know can she uh, make things go in in a certain direction and determine uh, you know what kind of a career that girl is going to move into and what life choices she's going to make those are outside the mother's control so she has to trustingly place the daughter's future in the large circle but as a mother there are certain many things that she can do to improve the 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 future of her child so in the small circle prayerfully she can jot down the things that she can do to work towards improving the child's future for instance you know she can keep her in prayer intercede for her uh, she would uh, maybe write down in the uh, in the in the small circle how, how in what way she's going to you know spend more time with her uh, so that um, they can start talking you know be comfortable with each, with each other and talk about certain issues that need to be brought up maybe in the small circle she could put down you know prayerfully uh, some point that she specifically wants to take up you know with with a girl and then ask god for uh, an an approach on how best to bring up that topic so things that she can do she places them in the small circle focuses on those things prays about them does it to the best of her ability with the lord's help but she makes a conscious choice to place the bigger things which are outside of her control in god's circle and say lord you take care of it i choose not to dwell upon this so whenever thoughts come you know about oh, okay what's going to happen you know if she if she doesn't get the required marks will she get a seat in that college so whenever those thoughts come which are outside of her control she would firmly say to herself no this is in, in god's circle god is going to take care of it in his time so i choose to trust in him and not dwell upon this so that would be one good strategy to employ um, you know in uh, in dealing with uh, worry so from our side we are acting in faith so we can have confidence in that that we have god's backing and on the other hand when it comes to the larger circle things we are choosing 
consciously to place those things in the Lord's hands. To move very, very quickly into the rest of the points, um, another thing that we can choose to do uh, is to prevent our concerns from going, uh, from growing into idols. You know, um, because it says in Matthew six thirty three that if we seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness first and the things which you know uh, uh, the spiritual things that need to come first uh, which are which should be the first priority he says that if we seek those things and focus on those things all the other things which we need for our life will anyway be automatically added to us that is the promise that he has made so rather than idolizing the secondary things and um, you know uh, worrying about them if we choose to keep our priorities straight and if we keep the first things first then we can have the confidence that god will do his part and he will add the secondary things to us as and when required you know so uh, rather than idolizing the secondary things if we can get our priorities right that would help us uh, not to uh, worry too much um another point is that uh, what uh, yes uh, sorry to interrupt you uh, yeah. would would we uh, like would we be able to wrap up maybe in a minute or so so that we can open up the time for questions <laughs> all right this. yeah sure sure, sure. Uh, yeah so uh, another point is that uh, we can um, we we are expected by god to plan for the future and work towards the future but we are not supposed to worry about the future because it says in Matthew 6 34 that when that future comes when that day of future you know that 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 day that we are working towards comes whatever is required for that day will be provided on that day on that tomorrow so we work towards it we plan towards it but we don't worry about it because the provision for that day will come on that day you know so we don't need to worry about it uh, beforehand uh, uh another point that um, uh, we we can uh, dwell upon is to offer our prayers with thanksgiving because when we offer our prayers with thanksgiving it's a reminder to our heart and mind about the nature of god his faithfulness of god and that builds up our faith and uh, another point when we have these worrisome thoughts coming into our minds about, you know, what if I, uh, you know, don't get a job? What if my health doesn't improve? So when those what ifs come into our mind, we take hold of those what ifs and we declare scripture to them. That's basically what we do. So if the thought comes, oh, what if I don't get a salary hike? How am I going to handle all the bills which are going to come in? So I take hold of that worrisome thought and I declare to it, to it and say, whether or not I get the salary hike, my God shall take care of all my needs. You know, he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. So these are just some of the uh, pointers that we can use in seeing to it that our concern stays on the side of godly concern and doesn't go over cross over the line and go into becoming a a, a very um, ungodly anxiety or a worry yeah so um let me stop sharing the screen and uh, yes yeah that's about it <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Deepika. This uh, subject, uh, as we stated earlier, uh, is, uh, you know, it's it's interesting, but it's also something that each one of us have experienced at some point or the other, um, experiencing godly concern and then, you know, maybe worry, anxiety. Uh, and I'm sure that there'll be a whole bunch of questions today. So we're going to open up this time for um, us to go ahead and ask our questions you may either post the questions on the chat or uh, kindly uh, unmute your mics and ask the question uh, deepika is here and so are our other faculty and we'll do our best to answer your questions
All right. Um, so maybe just let me just pose a question to Deepika. Uh, Deepika, um, practically, how do you handle worry? Like if you're in a situation where um, worrying is an option, then practic what do you do practically in order to overcome that? Yeah, so uh, I mean, it was a few months ago that I read about these two circles. So I practice it almost every single day. You know, when uh, when a thought comes into my mind, if it is something that is outside of my control, something that I cannot do anything about, I immediately remind myself, this is in God's circle. So God is going to take care of it uh, in his time, in his way. I just need to do whatever I can, you know, in the smaller circle. So if it is something that I can do something about, you know, maybe uh, work towards, uh, you know, um, achieving that that bigger thing. So whatever little bit I can do from my side, I will prayerfully do. But I will. I have made a conscious choice I mean, ever since I got to know about this whole uh, two circle thing to um, to tell myself if, if it is something that belongs in that bigger circle, I say, no, I'm not going to dwell upon it. The Lord will take care of it. And the faith to be able to do that, um, that basically has come by spending a lot more time than earlier in God's presence, basically to learn two things. First, to educate my mind more and more about his faithfulness and his love. That has been a big help. The second thing is to become more and more aware of who I am in Christ, my status. So these two things, even as I'm dwelling upon them and you know, improving in this in, in knowing these two areas, God, his nature, his faithfulness, uh, and who I am, how he regards me, what my status is. So even as I have been dwelling more on these things, it's become much easier for me to leave those things which are in God's circle in God's circle. Let him take care of it in his way, in his time. I'm not going to meddle. I'm not going to you know uh, try to control uh, that area and make God do things in my way. It's become easier because now I'm able to you know trust him more. So that has been one uh, very, very helpful thing for me. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deepika. While we wait for questions, I uh, would just like to open out this question to all our faculty. Anyone can please answer. If you're facing a very difficult situation, uh, there's always that temptation to go into worry and anxiety. But how do you handle it? What are some practical things that you do uh, in order to you know, take care of that situation and not move into worry and anxiety? Any of our faculty, please feel free to unmute and share. OK, uh, I think I'll go ahead and ask Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, Pastor Jay Kumar, any thoughts on this? Um, I think good morning, everyone. Um, um, yeah, I, I think that was a great uh, distinguisher between, uh, you know, godly concern and worry. And uh, while we have the you know, direct commandment from the Lord not to worry and practically, uh, you know, some of the things that we can do. Yeah, for me personally, uh, uh, see, there are a couple of things that I'd like to do in the natural and in the spiritual. Uh, one of the things is in the natural, the physical, I just like to go for a walk. You know, just to um, like, uh, just to move up, move, and physically do something that always helps me. Uh, and at the same time, uh, just to pray in the spirit, and just to worship the Lord, pray in tongues. And uh, we know that pray in tongues, and we pray in tongues that uh, you know uh, we are being edified in the inner man. That um, sometimes we don't know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit makes the prayer for us uh, in. With, with utterances you know? uh, so um so th so those are some things that I, I immediately i can think of that i would uh, you know move to and uh, and do in my life thank you thank you thank you pastor jay kumar that was uh, really helpful uh, if any others of our faculty want to share please feel free to how do you handle a difficult situation and 
not going to worry. All right. Uh, while we wait for questions or comments, uh, I can just share two things that I can think of right now. One, of course, is prayer, as Philippians chapter 4 encourages us to bring everything to the Lord with thanksgiving. Um, that is, that is uh, very powerful. So when we pray, uh, we, we can actually, uh, you know, strengthen uh, our trust, our faith in the Lord, and we know that you know we hand over our burdens, we cast our cares on the Lord, and then we receive of His peace, uh, and that is incredible. That's a great privilege that we have. So praying um, in in these times, and secondly, um, uh, I think breaking down the task into um, doable sections. Uh, so to have a good look. Uh, at the task, be very objective about it. And as Pastor Deep, uh, Deepika was sharing, she was saying that uh, um, what God can do, we need to just hand it over to him and do what we can do. Uh, and so when we take a good objective look at the task, uh, we can understand which sections we can tackle. And then um, if we can break that down and uh, you know tackle with the smaller sections and you know, therefore, have a plan to deal with what we are able to deal with. That's also uh, empowering. So uh, those are two things that I can think of. And uh, that way, you know, be able to overcome uh, worry and anxiety. So we have a question here in the chat um, section. Jeffina is asking, what's the difference between worry, anxiety, and depression? Uh, that's quite technical but any uh, thoughts on it uh, yeah for other faculty as well um so worries generally uh, thoughts about the future uh, things which have not happened and will probably never happen you know it's all these thoughts in the mind what if this happens what if that happens so it's basically the what ifs so worry is about uh, thinking about things which may happen or purely imaginary things which will never ever take place that would be worry i suppose anxiety is more a kind of uh, pervasive feeling of fear that goes on and on because i mean you might have had a bad experience in the past and now you're anxious that maybe it's going to happen again and it's this kind of fear always constantly that oh you know, this the, the bad experiences of my past are going to get repeated again. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? That would be anxiety, I suppose. Uh, it can also be um, very severe worry, where you are so worried about these imaginary things that you're thinking may happen, that it turns into anxiety, where it becomes a kind of pervading fear that's always there in the background. You know, it's always there uh, running in your mind. So I, anxiety, I, I, I would say, is a stronger... Um, yeah, yeah, it's a stronger symptom uh, where you have allowed the worry to get to a stage where it has now become a continuous background noise of anxiety. Depression, on the other hand, um, with regard to worry and anxiety, is it? Because depression on its own, I suppose, would be sadness. I know it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a feeling of deep sadness that you're not able to come out of. Uh, you, it's a sense of hopelessness. Uh, so with regard to the topic of worry and anxiety, depression is maybe when you have, if you have given up hope, yeah, you feel that the problems are so big and so huge and these imaginary things which you think may, have, may happen in the future seem so impossible that you have just given up and maybe that has, you know, left you feeling depressed. So maybe that could be one way of putting it across. If anyone else can throw more light, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Deepika. Um, you know, as, as I stated, these are technical words as well, like as far as mental health is concerned. So uh, to get their exact definitions, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, Google search and some research would help. But uh, Deepika shared, you know, uh, from her understanding. So we're grateful for that. Um, uh, I hope that's OK, Jafina. Can we move on to the next question? OK, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, we'll go to Sheba's uh, question, Sheba Shinde. Uh, she says, in sickness, sometimes we get scared about 
that sickness we know the word we confess we confess it then also suddenly sometimes we get scared what is this and uh, what we can do in this situation is it anxiety or fear yeah if i'm going through a sickness then uh, i would have a lot of thoughts coming into my mind uh, you know i mean different scenarios i may wonder whether it's going to take a long time for me to get well i may wonder whether the medicines are going to be working so you just have all of these thoughts coming in so we would have to um, uh, you know um whatever we can do you know as in if you, uh, if you if you think that sickness has lasted long enough and you would need a second consultation so whatever from you can do from your side uh, you know logically thoughtfully prayerfully you would to take those steps and do that uh, but then uh, some of the things that you may be imagining about your sickness uh, those things may not even take place because those are in the future you're thinking it may go that way it may go this way so anything that is beyond your control the lord will take care of he would not hold uh, you responsible you know to somehow resolve something that that is out of your hands so the bigger issues regarding your sickness the lord will take care so you continue to claim the scriptures and you know uh, uh, we would just continue to exercise our faith and in his time the lord will uh, provide the healing so when these thoughts different uh -huh. thoughts come to us any step that we can take from our side we do we go ahead and take it but if it is something beyond our control and it may not even happen in the future we just leave it in the lord's hands and and we say lord uh, you know uh, you will take care of this in your time and we continue to hold on to the scriptures so uh, um yes thank you dipika uh, mm -hmm. i was just wondering if uh, we could also discuss the faith uh, aspect in such a situation um, because you know as uh, shiba is sharing here um, in when one is sick and uh, seemingly it's you know maybe extending that sickness is extending and a person is getting scared anxious and fearful um, so how can we apply faith uh, I'll just request Pastor Ashish. Pastor, would you have any thoughts about how to handle this matter? Yeah, the, what what the Bible teaches us is, you know, to um, to just continue strong in faith. Uh, so there is God's side to this uh, to healing, and there is man's side to healing. Uh, man's posture is uh, is not one of passive waiting, but it's of active faith, uh, and that's where I think a lot of us miss it. Uh, faith is not passive; faith is active. That means, uh, so you know, sometimes we use the phrase "leave it in God's hands," uh, and uh, uh, how do we translate that? The wrong way to translate leave it in god's hands is to sit and do nothing that's not what the bible calls us to do to leave it in god's hands means yes i know god's the healer his will is to heal me uh, his timing is now his timing is not in the future right second corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 says now is the appointed time now is the day of salvation so when does god want me to be saved uh, God doesn't want me to be saved tomorrow. God wants me to be saved now. That's God's appointed time. So that's very clear. That's scripture. So God's timing for salvation is now. but And faith is now. Uh, but many times, because of our, you know, our, our, our thought, we say, I'm leaving it in God's hands. And what we're really doing is you're putting it off into the future. Uh, but God's timing is now. Salvation is now. And the word salvation, we understand, includes healing, safety, deliverance, everything. So what is God's time to heal us? What's God's time to save us? It's now, not, not tomorrow, not day after. So our, the wrong understanding of faith is I leave it in God's hands, which means I become passive. That's, that's not Bible faith. Bible faith is act it's dynamic it means i am standing in faith and i'm pressing into what is mine that's bible faith 
passivity is not Bible faith, right? So uh, going back to this question, uh, uh, we have to ask ourselves, you know, what, what is the posture of my faith? Is, is the posture of my faith passive or is the posture of my faith active? Uh, if my if posture, the, what is active faith? It's pressing in, right? Jesus said, Matthew 11, verse 12, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it, not the passive take it, but the violent take it by force. So there's a difference between being violent and being passive. And who are the ones who are going to take what's in the kingdom? Those who are violent, not those who are passive. Right? So uh, in those times of sickness, we need to stay violent. We need to stay active. We need to keep pressing in with every ounce of strength we have to press in, not to be passive. Right? So uh, how, how, how would that translate? That means Okay, my healing hasn't manifested, but I'm going to maybe double up my time in the Word of God. If I was spending an hour in meditating and healing scriptures, I'm going to start doing two hours. Or if I've been speaking God's Word, uh, you know, uh, once a day, I'm going to say, Lord, this is mine. I'm going to do it twice a day. Now, uh, so God's appointed time for our healing, for our salvation, for our deliverance is now, not tomorrow. Um, and so, knowing that, we have to be aggressive, pressing into the kingdom of God. And uh, like Paul said, and I'll probably close with this verse, I don't want to make this a sermon. Uh, what Paul said in Ephesians 6, he says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. That means, I've done everything. What else must I do? Keep standing. You know, and that standing is not a posture of passivity. Passivity would passivity would be having to put on your full armor, having done all to stand, sit down, relax. That's passive. But the active posture is having done all to stand. I'm standing up, and I'm pressing forward with the the the, the, the weapons that God has given me. So I, I think that's that's what we should be doing. Uh, being very active in our faith, uh, Shiva, uh, that, uh, and fear is an enemy. It's something we don't tolerate. Doubt is an enemy. Anxiety is an enemy. So we resist it, right? We don't tolerate it. So there's that active sense of uh, pushing against those things. Yeah, I'm sorry, it took too much time. Thank you. Um. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. That uh, is very helpful. Uh, Pastor, sorry to bother you once again, but if you could uh, also address Natasha's question, that will be very helpful. So Natasha is asking, um, sometimes when God seems silent for years, then what should be our attitude to handle this issue? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I... I... I've shared some thoughts, uh, which which definitely is uh, to continue to be you know to to be active uh, in faith, and uh, and maybe double up in what we're doing in the active expression of our faith. Uh, you know, and and also to discern like you know what is it that that's going to give me my breakthrough. Uh, um, there could be things that we God wants us to do to uh, get us our breakthrough. So um, I think if we actively seek God for that, He will definitely speak to us. So uh, continue with active faith double up or increase what we're doing in pressing into the kingdom and also seek God for what is it that's you know, very specific going to give us our breakthrough. You know, uh, so we continue very actively seeking God to, for the breakthrough and he will lead us into it. 
Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much for answering Natasha's question as well. I hope uh, both Sheba and Natasha are okay with those answers. Please let us know. Uh, we could um, accommodate one more question. So if at all there's a question that uh, any of us on this call have, please feel free to share that or a thought or an experience even, like if you just want to talk about it, please feel free. All right. Um, so it seems like uh, we have addressed the questions that were uh, posed and uh, there are no more questions. So uh, what we can do is we can pray and wrap up for this morning. Uh, and before we do that, I just want to extend uh, a heartfelt thank you to Deepika for mm -hmm. sharing on the subject of godly concern versus worry and anxiety. Um, uh, it's truly helpful to you know, uh, understand these aspects and also see how we can we can uh, live our lives as believers, putting tr our trust in the Lord and uh, staying away from worry and anxiety. So let's close with a word of prayer and would like to request uh, one of us on the call to please go ahead and uh, pray. Okay, not able to hear anyone. Let's pray. Yes. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, we thank you for the lecture, for the mentoring hour that we've been having. Lord, many of us, we've always been having worry, but at least now we have a glimpse of how we should react in case such a thing happens. And again, being Bible college with the faculty and with students, we should also extend what we've learned to all those out of the people in our circles so that worry should not get a bit a better of them i do pray please lord continue in anointing to all the faculty especially to our lecturer who has shared with us and the moderator plus all the bigger drums in the house lord i do pray for our for ourselves the students lord as we prepare to go into our next we do pray that you bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. And uh, thank you once again, uh, Deepika. Thank you, everyone, thank for you. joining on this call. God bless you. Have a wonderful day ahead.